So for this pattern, you will need one full skein of fingering weight yarn and five minis that go along with it. For this particular sample, I'm going to be using a deconstructed set from the Frosted Stitch in the colorway Renaissance. So this is Renaissance. And then these are the five minis that go along with it. So the Frosted Stitch has these available on her website monthly, but if you don't have um, the ability to purchase them, you can find any fingering weight yarn that you want and um, five minis, or alternatively, you can also find scrap yarn. So you need to make sure that you have about 20 grams each and that they're about the same yardage as the finger and weight yarn that you have. You will also need a 6.5 millimeter Tunisian crochet hook or crochet hook needed to make gauge. I've attached a um, 20 inch cable and stopper on here. Um, this particular one is from Knitter's Pride and this is their meditation um, cable. This is not sponsored, but I love the swivel on here. I find that when I'm doing Tunisian crochet, the swivel really helps with any um, wrist pain. Scissors, a tapestry needle for weaving in ends. You'll also need some stitch markers as needed and buttons. Now the buttons are the primary part of the design. If you elect not to use them, you may need to adjust your width a little bit to make sure that it fits around. Um, I'm using these buttons from Tinker's Hollow. Um, you can use any buttons you have, but I love these handmade wooden buttons. Um, they're made from a small business, so I'd love to do anything I can to support my fellow small businesses. So I've caked up my yarn, and what we're gonna be doing for this pattern is using two strands of fingering weight held together. So you can either divide your skein in half and have two separate cakes, or you can do what I'm gonna do. I'm using the center pull, which I've kept separate. And I'm also using the outside. So what I'm gonna do is hold both of these together um, and work them as I'm going through. Um, the whole point of this cowl is to have blended colors. So I'm totally okay with the fact that these are two separate colors being held together. It's only gonna add to the prettiness of this. I'm gonna go ahead and take my hook and I'm going to make a chain of 80. So what I'm gonna do is make that chain of 80 and then come back and meet you and show you the next step. So I've made my chain of 80 and what I'm gonna do is working in these back bumps, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a loop. And you can see how I'm just holding these two pieces of yarn together to make them basically act as like one single um, strand of kind of a, I'd say closer to DK, but it could also be used, you could also use a sport weight, um, but definitely a thicker piece than just holding it by itself. And we're gonna go ahead and just working in those back bumps. Again, I'm gonna, you can see where I'm working. I'm just picking up a loop. So this is the front of the chain, this is the back of the chain, these are the back bumps and I'm gonna pick them up. And by the time I'm done, I should have 80 loops on my hook. So I'm gonna do that. Um, and then I'll do a standard return pass and I'll meet you back to show you the next step. For this cowl, we will be doing a standard Tunisian return pass for every row. To do that, you're going to yarn over, pull through once, and then yarn over, pull through two. And you'll pull through two for every subsequent loop until you get back to having just one loop on your hook. I find this Tunisian return pass pretty soothing. It's one of my favorite things to do. So I'm gonna continue doing this till I get back to my first stitch, and then I'll meet you back and show you how we're gonna be working this cowl moving forward. So I've come to the last return stitch. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through two, and now I'm going to start working the forward pass. And to do this, we're gonna be doing something a little bit slightly different than our normal Tunisian simple stitch. For our normal Tunisian simple stitch, we work in this front vertical bar. Instead, what we're gonna be doing is working in the top horizontal bar right here. You can kind of see right there. This top horizontal bar is for, formed by our return pass that we just finished. So to show you how to do this, you can see that I have a stitch here that correlates with this first, with this first horizontal bar here. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that first one. And then here's my second stitch right here. And right behind that, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a loop just like that. So I'm gonna keep going, picking up loops in that top horizontal bar, 
just like that. And you want to make sure that you're getting both loops. So you can see that can be a little bit tricky because we're using two pieces of yarn held together, but I'm just working into that top horizontal bar. So just to show you again where that is, it's right here. So again, right there. So I'm gonna continue doing this. I'm gonna do several rows of this variation of the Tunisian simple stitch, the Tunisian top vertical or top horizontal bar. And after I've done several rows, I'm gonna meet you back and show you how we're gonna introduce one of the minis. So keep going and I'll meet you back shortly. So we are getting to the last couple of stitches and I wanted to make sure that you know that one of the most important stitches that we have to do is this stitch here between our last Tunisian stitch and the second to last stitch. Because we started on our first stitch, we skipped the first one and started behind the second stitch, it's really important that we don't forget this stitch here. So I'm gonna go ahead and yarn over, pull up a loop, and then I'm immediately going to go into my last Tunisian stitch. So that's going behind both horizontal bars, or in this case, four, because we have um, our yarn held double, and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through. So I'm on the return pass now for row four, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce my next color. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of yarn. I'm going to only pick up one of my Renaissance, of my original color. So I don't need both strands anymore. I'm only gonna need to use a single strand. And it doesn't matter when you're doing the center pull um, or the outside, which one you prefer. Just stick with one and you're gonna be using that throughout the whole thing. So I've separated my two strands. I've gone ahead and I'm going to now hold my next color and the single strand of Renaissance together. And I'm going to start my return pass, just like normal. Yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through two. Pull through two, pull through two. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a subtle gradient um, throughout this cowl, which is why it's called the layer cake cowl of all the different colors. I'm gonna do um, a certain amount of rows for with, with these two held together, and then I'm gonna go ahead and switch into the next color. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on a few colors and then I'll come back and show you um, how it looks. And I'm also gonna show you um, some options that you have for making it um, slightly different, adding a stripe look versus just having a subtle look. So I'm gonna keep working on this and then I will meet you back. So I finished all of the color changes and you can see I started with the light blue, went to the dark blue, did the brown, did the cream and the pink. And I ended the way I started with three rows of just the um, Renaissance held together double just like this. So um, I have my last three rows and I'm gonna go ahead and show you now how we're gonna do the finishing row. So normally for this, you do um, a bind off, you pick up here for the, as in you're doing a simple stitch, but we're not gonna do that. Because we did the whole thing in the bar, we're gonna go ahead and finish off also in the bar. So again, this first stitch, this first loop goes with this first space. I'm gonna skip that, go into the second space, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull through the first one. So now for this closing part, I'm always only gonna have one loop on my hook. So again, into the next space, Yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull through the previous loop. Doing the same thing. So we're doing the bind off as if we're doing the Tunisian bar stitch, the horizontal bar stitch. Again, in and through the first loop. So I'm gonna keep doing this until I get to the last stitch. And then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna move it to working along the sides. So I'm just finishing my bind off row and I'm going into the last stitch, 
second to last stitch, and then we're going to go ahead and go into like how we're working out our last tunation stitch. So we want to make sure we go through both vertical loops and pull through. So I'm not going to disconnect this, but I wanted to show you how this is done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add our border for our buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my work. And this is the side where I have all of the um, ends here where I did my um, color changes. I'm just going to ignore those for now and I'll weave them in later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start working along the side and I'm going to pick up a loop. And unlike the other area where we skipped the first one, I'm going to go ahead into the first loop. I'm going through both, yarn over, pull up a loop. Go through the next, yarn over, pull up a loop. And I'm going to keep working until I get to the end. And I will do a last Tunisian stitch at the end so I can make sure that I, um, so I can make sure that I've, I get all the stitches in for the stitch counts. And I'm going to go ahead, if a piece of yarn comes in, I'm going to go ahead and take it out. It will not stay. It's not like crochet where I can weave in my ends. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just continue to work. Let me get both of these pieces together. Again, I'm ignoring the ends there, and I'm gonna just work into the side. You can see I'm working into both loops here, just like that, and I'm yarn. I'm gonna go in, yarn over, pull up a loop. And then I'm gonna do my standard Tunisian return pass, and then I'm gonna work the Tunisian knit stitch for this end. So what I'll do is I will finish up, and then I'll show you um, how to do the Tunisian knit stitch. So again, we're working into the sides here, into the edge where we're gonna place our buttons. So I've gone ahead and worked along the edge, and now I'm gonna go ahead and work the Tunisian knit stitch. So to do that, um, I'm going to work in between the front and back vertical bar. So you can see right here, this is how we would do a simple stitch. Instead, I'm gonna go in between those bars, yarn over and pick up a loop. Again, you can see the back vertical bar here and the front there. I'm gonna go in between the two, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now, this is one of my favorite stitches, um, the Tunisian knit stitch. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make just a pretty border for putting on the buttons. So what we're gonna do for one side, and you can pick whichever side you want, we're gonna do six rows of, um, we're gonna do six rows total, so five more rows of the Tunisian knit stitch before we do a bind off for the Tunisian knit stitch. And I'll do that on this side, and then what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll cut my yarn and then I'll work into the side again along this edge. But for this side, we're only gonna do three rows and we're gonna do a special bind off making loops for our buttons. So I will come back and show you exactly how to do this. But what I'm gonna do for right now is I'm gonna continue doing my Tunisian knit stitch along this side. And I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna do for a total of six rows and then I'll bind off like I would for a Tunisian knit stitch. And um, again, when I show you how to do this side, I'll show you how to do the bind off as if you were doing a Tunisian knit stitch. So I'm gonna work on these rows and then I'll come back and show you how to do the other side. So I finished one side of the Tunisian knit stitch border. It does have that Tunisian curl, um, but it will finish up just fine when you block it. And I wanted to show you now how we're doing something slightly different for the other side. Now this side will have shorter rows, but the pattern will go over all of that. But because of um, the way that uh, this edge is, I want you to only work in the back loops of this side. So what that means is you can see here that there is a front loop and a back loop. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work into that back loop only. Yarn over, pick up a loop. If you go through both loops, um, I think it'll be okay. But what you're going to have is a really like some holes here that don't look as pretty. So I recommend that you go ahead and you work into the back loop of the side stitch there. Um, in order to get the prettiest end result. So I'm gonna keep working on this. I'm going to do shorter rows on this side and then I'm gonna come back and show you how to do the Tunisian um, knit stitch bind off as well as how we're gonna make the loops for our buttons. So before we get to the last part where I show you how to do um, 
the final closing stitches, I wanted to show you a finished pattern just to give you an idea ahead of time of how it's going to look. So you are going to do the Tunisia knit stitch, then you're going to make a loop and skip a stitch and then continue. So I used inch and a half buttons um, and I had to actually check, I wanted to check to make sure that these would actually fit around there just like that for those chains. So I'm gonna tell you how many chains I did, but if you use different size buttons or you're using more than the four buttons, you will have to adjust this based on that. But just adjust your chain based on um, what your button size is, and I think that'll make your collar end up being perfect. So I've done three rows of Tunisian knit stitch, and now we're gonna combine the knit stitch with the now we're gonna combine the knit stitch with our um, chains to make the loops for the buttons. So what I wanna do is I want the buttons to be close to the edges. So I figured out for my 39 stitches and the number of buttons I have, how I wanna place that. And that is totally up to you how you wanna do it. So I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and this is my first stitch. I'm gonna go in till I have to the fourth stitch and I'm going to do my Tunisia knit stitch. So. We're gonna do the Tunisia knit stitch for me. We're gonna do it three times. One, two, and three. Now I'm gonna go ahead and chain seven. Seven is the number of chains I need for my inch and a half button. So I'm gonna go ahead, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm going to skip a stitch because my buttons are pretty big and I want that loop to count um, that is a space for part of it and I'm going to go ahead and so there's my stitch that I did the Tunisian knit stitch bind off that's my skip stitch I'm going to go into this next stitch and go straight into a knit stitch bind off also so I'm back to having one loop and there it is that's how you do it so I'm going to continue on um, for the next bunch and I will show you after I've done a couple more what it looks like so I've done another repeat. So I started off with my four stitches, then I skipped one. I'm doing a repeat of nine, skip one, with my chain of seven. I'm here, I'm gonna do my um, chain of seven. Two, three, four, oops, five, six, seven. Remember, I'm skipping a stitch. So I'm skipping this stitch, and I'm going into that next stitch to do a Tunisian knit stitch bind off. And this is stitch one. I'm going to do nine, two, three, four, five. Let me get a little bit more yarn. Six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my chain of seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm skipping a stitch, and then I'm going to go ahead and go into the next stitch as a Tunisian knit stitch bind off. And again, you're going to just want to adjust this based on how you want your buttons placed. You're going to want to adjust this based on how big your buttons are. And also you're gonna to wanna to adjust it based on how many buttons you have. So now I'm done. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off and then I'm gonna go ahead and block this. Now remember with Tunisian, you really, really need to block it. I'm gonna show you really quickly. You can see how this edge is completely curled and looks awful. And I'll show you how this edge looks after blocking. You can see how much it, how nicely it lays flat on this side. Um, this one, in this pattern, I did something slightly different where I wanted one row of the solid minis. So you'll see what I did is I alternated. Um, I added in the, the second color, then I went ahead and did um, a row of actual just solid in, the, in that one mini color, and then I went back to adding in um, the large skein. So you can see I kind of did that throughout this whole pattern where you'll get a larger bright stripe of color. Whereas for this one, it's more of a subtle blend where it just went 
in the order of the mini. So I did not do a solid stripe. And so both of these options will be available in the pattern. You can see which one you like better. But again, remember, really, really important to block this um, to show how it opens up. I hope you like this pattern um, and you really enjoyed it. This is available free on my blog. All the instructions will be there. You can also purchase an ad-free pattern if you choose. All the details will also be in my, on my website. Um, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It does help me grow. Um, and also please do subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thanks and happy crocheting.